All right, good morning, folks. This is 11 for 24 a.m. on this lovely winter. Winter, oh, you know, I'm just gonna call it. It should be, it should be like a second Christmas. It's snowing again on its February 17th <laughs> of February, and yeah, so everybody else get your trees out because it's still Christmas. I'm just kidding, anyways. Okay, as I said earlier before, when I finish the 4x4, I'm going to show you how to actually solve the easiest, supposedly the hardest, but the easiest to me, problem for the Zarbus Cube set. And I'm going to do two of them instead of one. I'm going to do both of the problems, all the problems for the hardest one, all of them, which is only two. So, let me open up the, the book. Let me open up the book. And let me refocus my camera. Okay, let's zoom in. Okay, there we go. You see where it says 15? Right there. That is the level difficulty. Meaning that it has 15 sol uh, solutions to it. It has approximately, I should say, I should say approximately, because this is fairly new, nothing's actually absolute yet. But it has approximately 15 solvable, workable solutions. So, before my camera on my phone cuts off, because I really, 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 really drained my power, because I really didn't think about charging it, because I was in the middle of doing physics earlier today. Um, let's get these cubes solved. So, as I said before, these are actually, you know, representation of pieces. And the two represents this little piece, that little rectangular, it's called, by many people, a domino cube, a deuce cube, poly, a domino poly cube, a deuce poly cube, a two poly cube, whatever. Because it takes two little cubes to make up this size, this rectangle. So... The lucky thing about these, this is number 15, the funny thing I found about this is that they are actually mirrors of each other. In every sense of the word, even the pieces are mirrors of each other. As you can see, they use almost the same pieces, except that the G and the I are swapped, are actually not the same pieces. They're swapped, which means that they are mirrors of each other. And if you look at the G and then the H, I'll even put them down to show you before I even solve them. And let's pull it over to the G and the H. There you go. The H is the yellow piece on the left hand side and the G piece is on the right hand side. And these are what you would call five poly cubes, meaning that you could take five little poly cubes, take five, take five little poly cubes and put them together and make these shapes. So yeah. Now, so for those of you who are reading the, who are getting, who just now got the Zabras cube or still don't understand how to read the codes well and what they mean when they say five poly cube they're talking about how many little cubes make up the actual shape and it only goes up to five it doesn't go any higher than that so you don't have to worry about you know going there to do some mathematics and try to figure out what the heck they're talking about none of that so let's get to solving these really quickly and i'll do it both at the same time so I'm gonna do I don't know I could put the eye over here uh, you know I'm gonna, I like doing blue first we'll do blue first blue goes first blue's cool okay what we're gonna do we're gonna just make these to the side for a second uh, we're gonna take our much important piece called W which looks like a little claw and you know it looks like a little claw you know W and this piece is gonna be having is going to be orientated that way and the next piece that's very important is the v piece which is this makes you think like a tetris piece you know what i'm saying you know <laughs> so we put this down there and slide it into that like so then we could work another way but i don't feel like it so i'm going to use the g piece now 
and we need to do one important thing when we pay, put this down here. Some people might put this the wrong way and put it like this. When you're solving the first problem, we, some people consider the first problem, but the actual hardest problem for the easiest set in the whole entire book, you do not want to put this here like this. That is a big no-no. I should know it's not going to work. You're going to have one either one piece missing, you're going to have to take it down and do it over again. So what you're going to do is do that. So I'm going to do the same thing with the yellow side, the I set, or should I say the I cube, because everything else here is the same and boring, but the only thing that's unique is the I piece. So I'm calling it the I cube. That's the first element anyways of the whole entire problem anyways, as you saw by the code. So I'm looking for, oh yes, well, there you go. It's like hidden behind, the, behind these pieces. Okay, we're going to take our V and put it there. And we're going to do the same thing, but remember, this is the, a mirror image of it now. So we're going to flip it over and make sure we still have that gap. Now, make sure we still have that gap. Yes, yes, yes. What do you need? What do you want? What do you want? I mean, it'll do something right now. What do you want? Mm hmm okay yeah yeah uh-huh yes i'll get to it thank you uh-huh all right sorry about that yeah i was distracted now the most important thing is not to do what i was doing because i was distracted but this should be like this I put it in the same direction as the actual <laughs> GQ, which is wrong. And if you guys are probably wondering, we're like, oh my, who are you talking to? Uh, somebody wanted me to help them with the computer problem, and I told them to hold on. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna put the eyepiece down, and like the G piece. You do not want to flip it upside down to where the cube is like the poly cube is facing this way. No, 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 no. You want to do? You want to have it facing down like this? Just like that. Just like that. And then it depends on how you want to do the order. I mean, it could you could do it any way you want. I mean, it's it's workable anyway. As long as you don't knock this thing over like you know Jenga or whatever, then you're fine. So in my case, I'm gonna work with the U piece, or should I say, I call it the U T piece because it it actually looks like a T. I mean, really, it does. I mean, every sense of the word. I mean, it looks like a T. And we're gonna do one little thing. We're gonna put it down long ways. Long ways, as you can see what I'm doing right now, long ways. And as you can see, you wanna keep that gap, that gap. You wanna keep that gap, and I'm gonna do it on the other side. You wanna keep that gap. There's that gap. And no, I'll repeat this again. This is not like a Rubik's Cube. You can't go online and find any solutions unless somebody posts it on Twitter. But even if you did post, if they did post it on Twitter, you probably wouldn't even know how to read the solution because it looks like a crazy code mess. <laughs> and that's not even, I'm not even kidding. It does look like a crazy code mess, a long string. And the next piece, what do I want to put here? You know what? And here's the very important thing I want to mention. These domino cubes, I keep calling them domino cubes. These deuce or domino poly cubes right here. These two, let me separate them so you don't know the two. Let me separate them. These right here are very important because where you put these, also, depend, depict, chain, it depicts the actual capability of someone solving this. You can actually see yourself solving it once you have these in the right spot. If you don't have them in the right spot, and you will not be able to solve it because you will have to 
bring it down and then redo some parts again and you might end up knocking the whole thing over and you have to restructure it all over again so here's what we're going to do now as you can see these are mirrors of each other what we're going to do we're going to put one right here and then we're going to put one on the other side right here now let me separate the pieces because they're starting to look the same to me we have our pairs, the S and R's. One pair over here, one pair over there. S, R, S, R, or R, S, whatever. It's the pairs on the other side. Now, what you wanna do is make sure you solve this like a mirror. Whatever you do to one side, you gotta do the opposite on the other side. So, in this case, the S piece goes down below and fills that little gap that we had made early, that we made earlier. When we first started this out, we're gonna slide that in. And I just knocked over a piece, but that's okay. It's not a problem. I'm not gonna always put it back on. We're gonna slide that in. So it's right there. It's right there. That's the S piece. Now we're gonna put the R piece in. And that's a completed cube. And let's complete this one right here. Now granted, I'd be doing this a lot faster if I had, you know, two hands, but you know, I don't. So one hand is holding the camera, one hand is doing this. So, to... so unlike what we did here, the S is not gonna go down there. The S is actually gonna go where the R is on the other piece. Because if you tried that, if you tried to follow the same way, well, here's what you would have. You would have a, uh, a logic problem. See, you know, that ain't working. You're going to have a gap. You're going to have like two gaps, probably three gaps. Nope, nope, nope. Two gaps. And you're going to have a, nope, three gaps. Excuse me, I was right. And you're going to have a piece of sticking out from the top like so. And that's not going to give you a fixable or workable cube. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna take what we put up there, which was the R on the other on the other side, and we're gonna put the S up there. Now again, I apologize if my speech is sounding kind of off and slurred, it's because I've been doing physics for a long, long overhaul, and I'm pretty tired. And the last piece is the R. And now see, I could have done one thing, but to make it easier, instead of doing it like that, I should probably just take out the S and make it the last piece and put in the R. Cause I don't feel like toppling this thing over. So, just gotta work it in there, work it in, go in, there we go, there we go. And then put the S back in. And voila, we have two easy level cubes solved. Hundred percent solved. Now I'll pick these up and you know, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yep, it's falling apart out of my hand. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Same thing with this one. That one is coming off, coming off. And I'm gonna just make a tower out of it. Let's take like a Jenga tower, I swear. Yeah, you probably could play Jenga with this. Let me see. Um, yep, this is like the perfect Jenga, man. But, anyways, that's how you solve the first, or should I say, the hardest problem from the easiest set of problems in this code book, which is right beside me. So let me just get the light back in here or refocus this. That is how you fix, that is how you actually solve this little problem right here. Where you see the 15. And let me just pull back so I can get some more light in here. That is how you solve that one, that number 15 right there. So 
to all future Zabris Q uh, players, and you're first starting out, this is how you solve the problem. This is how you go about solving the rest of the cubes. Now, they're going to get harder, all the way up to 4x4, four four, which is, I believe, is the hardest one. At least so far, because there's also prisms that you can make, but that's another story. That's further down in the code book. And, like I said, all you have to do is just uh, read the codes carefully. Know what each piece means and what it means for the actual building of the actual cube or technically prism. And then you can solve it. Now, as I said in, my, in another video, treat it like a math problem. Treat each piece as... A little problem and solve it and once you do that you can more than likely solve all the other pieces now you can do it the algorithm algorithmic way which is what I just said or you can do the test and fail theory and then use memory to solve it and I've tried it both ways and I don't have a preference for we for either or but when it gets to the harder ones I have a tendency to go to the algorithm algorithm Oh boy, oh boy. Algorithmic side. <laughs> I have a tendency to go for the algorithms on that because it's a lot easier to figure out pieces instead of trying to build them together and watch it tumble on me. So, like I said, these are the two cubes put together as a tower. And good will hunting. Hope you guys have fun with this.